Hello guys, welcome to another series. I am success. In this series, the apostle will teach us, enlighten us, and open up the deep mysteries of the kingdom. I hope you are with your pen and your papers to write down striking points. I believe at the end of this series, you will be mightily blessed. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on all like to videos. partake of the communion and this is what the bible says the bible says he took bread and i hope you realize that jesus had earlier said he was that bread he called himself the bread of life is that true and he took this bread now which is himself the bible says he broke it and gave them i like the word break it no individual got the whole bread everybody got a part of it the Bible says he took the whole bread, which he called himself, and in distributing it, he broke it. So that for you to have the whole bread, everybody must bring the piece that he collected. Are we together now? Now sit quietly. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus is teaching something powerful. The Bible never said he gave. You would have assumed that he just gave John the beloved, or Peter, or someone else. The Bible says he broke it broke himself into various dimensions then he distributed to everyone who was there so that no single individual would claim he had all the bread are we together no single individual i said here is given the whole counsel of god let's recap all we have said so far number one i said that jesus came to give us life and life abundant you have to recognize this Jesus said it himself that he came to give us life. Number two, that this life that we have now received in Christ, the reality of that victorious life is activated through knowledge. Number three, that the knowledge that we receive is dimensional and it is according to our callings and our assignments. And then number four, that no single individual is given the whole counsel of God. That means all the knowledge that is required for the excelling of the believer cannot be given to one person as an assignment. Are you getting the point now? This means, still buttressing on point four, I wrote here, listen before you write. This means in isolation to other dimensions within the body of Christ, no believer can grow accurately. Did you get that point? In isolation to other dimensions within the body of Christ, no believer, no matter how well intentioned, can grow accurately. Meaning, if you choose as a believer to refrain from accessing other dimensions of God that have been distributed according to the across the body of Christ something will happen to the health of your growth you will not grow accurately are we together this means in isolation to other dimensions within the body of Christ no believer can grow accurately let me give you two scriptures one Acts chapter 18. I like to use that scripture from verse 24. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24. Acts 18 from verse 24. The Bible says there was a certain Jew named Apollos. He was born at Alexandria. The Bible says an eloquent man. Follow this man now. He was number one an eloquent man. He was mighty in scriptures. The Bible says he came to Ephesus. We're reading down to 28. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. That means he submitted himself to mentorship. Being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of God. But here's the problem. Knowing only the baptism of John. What a fervent man, full of zeal submitting himself to mentorship the bible says he knew only the baptism of john it is safe to assume that the person who taught him knew only the baptism of john too are we together now now imagine if you were to learn god only through the lens of this man you would limit yourself to only the realities as far as the baptism of john is concerned and you would never be able to step into higher levels of spiritual truth the bible says verse 26 now he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla 
had heard, they took him unto them. I like this scripture. They heard him and said, wow, what a zealous person. But this man is limited in a lot of knowledge. This man can be a better tool for the kingdom if we add these other dimensions to him. The Bible says they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. More perfectly. So if you had listened to this man by last year, you would be able to discern his limitations. And then two strange people called him and said, Young man, you are a zealous person. I see your passion, but you are limited in knowledge. Let us supply for you other dimensions that make for your efficiency. If you were to listen to the same person by next year, you would see that you would come with another dimension of grace. Second scripture, Acts 19 from verse 1. Acts 19 verse 1. Powerful. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to the same Ephesus again and finding certain disciples. Please shout it with me. Say disciples. Disciples meant that number one, they were saved. And number two, they were being taught and mentored by someone. Am I right on that? Verse two, the Bible says, he said to them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And watch this now. They said, we have not so much heard that there be any Holy Ghost. Yet they were disciples. They were under the mentorship of someone. But they were the dimension of the Spirit. That was the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Yet it was not captured in their curriculum. Ah. We have not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. It's like asking, do you know anything about the internet? And they say, no. We've been in school for years by a diligent professor, but we've never heard that there is anything called the internet. And I like Paul. Paul would have condemned them and insulted them, but Paul said, no. Now let me show you. He said, verse 3, he was surprised. He said, unto what baptism then were you baptized? In other words, who is responsible for this bad job like this? You mean the Holy Ghost is everywhere. You are in Ephesus, the place of revelation. And you are not even aware that there are spiritual things happening like this. They said unto John's baptism. The same John again. Verse 4. And then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. I like Paul. Paul took it from where they believed. He didn't throw away that. He said, listen, what you have gotten is not wrong. You have done well. I salute you and I salute the person who has taught you. But then let's take it from that point. He said he's, he was only pointing to you. That at this point, you should connect to something higher. And when they listened, verse 5, their hearts were open. The Bible says, verse 6 now, please very quickly for sake of time. When Paul had laid his hands on them. The Holy Ghost came on them, meaning the Holy Ghost had been hovering around that lecture theater. Will you not allow me? I'm sure the guys were asking, why am I weak in the spirit? Why is it that I cannot pray? I am a faithful disciple. Where is the strength I will get to live the victorious life? There was a dimension they had ignored, that they were suffering the symptom of the absence of the Holy Spirit. I wonder how they were effective disciples without the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, tarry. He said, there are many things that cannot happen until the Holy Spirit comes. Is someone learning already? No single individual is given the whole counsel of God. And that in isolation to other dimensions within the body, no believer can grow accurately. What's the next point now? <laughs> You've been writing many things. Let's call it five. Five. Anything you say you are right, just write. The most important thing is that you get the revelation. Are we together? Please write. There are consequences. This is about the crux of our discussion tonight. There are consequences for ignoring the whole counsel of God. Please write it down. There are consequences. It is not only wrong. There are consequences, sometimes lifetime consequences, for ignoring the whole counsel of God. There are consequences for ignoring the whole counsel of God. And could it be that some of the limitations in our lives today are the consequences 
some of the limitations that we have experienced in the various facets of our lives? Could it be that those limitations have come as a result of consequences of ignoring other dimensions of God that he has put within the body for our profiting? Let me show you a scripture that details the consequences of ignoring the whole counsel of God and by extension ignoring the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll begin our reading from verse 27. 1 Corinthians 11, Paul was teaching about the communion. And then he veered off to explain the mystery of the communion as touching the body of Christ. Here's what he had to say. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So the context is he was teaching people how to take the communion as you know properly. But he's saying that the communion itself is an adumbration of the body of Christ and then the Lord's body that we call the body today. The, the corporate body of believers. 28. 